Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we've got an instructional video on some of the advanced settings when converting voices with Kits AI. After watching this video, you'll have a much better understanding of the program and how to get the best conversions for your AI voices. So let's get started. So when converting audio and picking your AI model, you would then plug in your audio right here. No one knows, no, no one knows me like you. And then from there, we would always recommend going on down to the advanced settings that we can really dial in what you want and what you need to have the best possible conversion. So the first advanced setting you'll see over here is going to be the remove instrumentals. This is going to be good if the audio that you're trying to convert is a full song with vocals, melodies, bass, drums, etc. You can click this button right here and Kits AI will do the rest for separating those vocals from the instrumental. Now let's say hypothetically that we did want to do that. These next two buttons can help clean up that audio. It's very common for vocals and songs that have reverb and delay. So hitting this button right here will help get rid of that. And now going on over to the remove backing vocals, if there's like ad-libs in the hip hop song or just backup singers, this feature right here will help get rid of that. All right, now going on over to the pitch shift over here, this is going to be a very helpful tool if the audio that you're converting is out of the range of the model that you're trying to convert, which luckily the audio matches the pitch level pretty good here. But let's say for example, that we go to a different model and now the pitch level is going to be too high for the current model selected. So we can go on down to pitch shift over here where we can now go down lower where minus four semitones, we are now in a good pitch level, but that will change the key of your audio as well. So just keep that in mind. So everything we've talked about up until this point is going to be pretty basic and pretty easy to understand. The two biggest settings here that are going to directly correlate to how your conversion is going to turn out are going to be the conversion strength and the volume strength. So first, let's talk about the conversion strength. All right, this is going to be how much the conversion process changes the input audio to make it sound like the AI voice. When converting, the model hears a sound and compares it with its own version of that sound. So the conversion strength setting defines how much of its own version is going to be used. Now, low settings will still sound like the AI voice, but you might want to push that a bit further by increasing that setting. But you don't want to push this one too far here. Increasing it, yes, will add more character, but in some instances, it might actually increase the mispronunciation of certain words. For example, here's some audio of the male strained rock model with a high conversion strength. And try and listen for how exaggerated Gunna is pronounced. I'm not gone, that takes two. It's over, it's over. What a surprise. Compared to the same audio with a lower conversion strength right here. I'm not gone, that takes two. It's over, it's over. What a surprise. Now, I do think it's pronounced a bit better here with the lower conversion strength, but we're not getting that character and that grit from the AI model. Here's the same audio with the medium conversion strength. I'm not gone, that takes two. It's over, it's over. What a surprise. I think it's always going to be best to start with a medium conversion strength and then see how that works for your audio and then change it from there if needed. All right, now on over to the next important setting, the volume blend. Here's some example audio that I plug into kits. I scream, uh, shock leader. Go diva, go diva, go diva. Now with a recording like this, a lower model volume will maintain the same crooning audio levels as the original file, something very smooth and whispered, which sounds like this. A screamer, shock leader. Go diva, go diva, go diva. As opposed to a high model volume, which will help smoothen out that audio. A screamer, shock leader. Go diva, go diva, go diva. Okay, so when do you use a high model volume compared to a low model volume? It'll be good to use a higher amount when you want the conversion to be more smoothed out and polished, like how the vocal model was trained on. Great for recordings that maybe had varied audio levels or less than ideal conditions. Now, when going for a lower volume blend, you'll want that for when you want to preserve the dynamics of your audio. You might have a really nice, dynamic, clean recording that you might want to preserve, like in a studio, or you might be making an instant AI cover and you want the converted vocals to sit properly in the mix. All right, so the conversion Version strength and volume blending are going to be very important settings here that we want to make sure that everybody understood. So moving on, we can now talk about the pre-processing effects. These are going to be subtle changes to help clean up your input audio before conversion. Cut noise will help mask some static background noise. You can use this one right here if there's going to be some rumble in the background of your recording or even some harshness in the high end. These two right here are both going to be a subtle shelf, whether that be a low shelf or a high shelf. It will not completely cut out those frequencies, but help dial them down a little bit. Smooth volume right here will be very good for recordings that have varied volume. And maybe if you know that the audio is not exactly in tune, Press the button right there and can help out. Now with any kind of pitch correction, I think it's always good to start off low and then increase where you feel like you need to. Now going on over to the post-processing effects. So this is going to be for the input audio or this is what's going to be applied afterwards. So first we've got the compressor right here, which will help out with some more varied volumes and overall just presence. And then we've got some more creative options over here like chorus, reverb, and delay. Now when using these three creative ones right here, it's important to know exactly what you want out of your converted audio. If you need something very quick and easy, feel free to use these options right here. But if you are planning on putting this audio inside of your DAW, I think it's very important to have as much flexibility as possible, so you could use your own chorus, reverb, and delay plugins. You might just want to stick to the compressor over here. That's normally what I do with my conversions for getting audio from my tracks. Now let's put some of this into practice. Here's the original audio that we plugged in. No one knows, no, no one knows me like you. 
and I do feel like the male strand rock would be perfect for this conversion. So we don't have any instrumentals or reverb or backing vocals. And this is a pretty clean sounding studio recording, so I don't think I'll need very high volume blend or conversion strength. We can try and use some cut noise and some smooth volume. Then for post-processing, the compressor would be pretty cool, and I'm not really going to be using this for my DAW, so adding some reverb and delay as well. Also good to mention over here, once you have these settings that you like, you can go and save that preset. That way you've got these exact settings for a later use. Now hitting convert. No one does, no, no one does me like you. And I was right there. I think that the male strain rock was a very good model to use for this. All right, so I've got the original audio right here stacked on top of the AI conversion, where you can see the clear difference here in volume. Now, of course, it's going to be a lot more filled out in the AI conversion because of the reverb and delay, but the male strain rock version does look a bit more smooth and not quite as much dynamic range as the original, but could also help out with the presence there as well. All right, and that's going to be an in-depth look at the advanced settings here for Kits AI, where now hopefully you've got a better understanding of the program and how to get the best possible conversions for your AI voices. So from all of us here at Kits, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.